Parker. Come on, fish. Do it. Do it now. Right away. There we go. Dude, just come to the top. It's a trout. Yes, it's a trout. It's summertime and it's been pretty hot, but the speckled trout fishing has been pretty good. So where can we find them? Well, that's a good question for which I have a good answer. The most important thing to speckled trout during the summer is their spawn. This is their chance to reproduce, and in order to successfully do so, they require special conditions. One of those conditions is salty water. When speckled trout are spawning, they need water with a salinity that is at least 15 to 17 parts per thousand meaning water that has 15 to 17 parts of salt for every 1,000 parts of water. To put this into perspective, average strength ocean water is about 35 parts per thousand. If the water isn't salty enough, their eggs won't float into the marsh and hatch. Instead, they'll sink to the bottom of the water column and die. Do you remember those spring speckled trout I was catching in Lake Pontchartrain? Well, that water was about five to seven parts per thousand, maybe less. That isn't salty enough. So speckled trout have a long swim to get to water salty enough for a successful spawn. And one place on Louisiana's coast we find water salty enough is the East Biloxi Marsh. Not only is this area salty enough to meet their spawning needs, but it's also rife with oyster reefs, tidal highways, and islands that make for excellent feeding opportunities. So if you'd like to learn more about the summer fishing pattern, then please watch this video all the way through. So that way you get all the good fishing tips and advice that you can apply on your next fishing trip. But if you would like to gain a complete understanding of the summer fishing pattern, complete with instructor support, then please check out my latest course, Summer Fish Location, which you can find at lafbelite.com summer. In Summer Fish Location, I detail the behavior of speckled trout and redfish, summer's conditions, and where to find them based upon those factors. So let's take what I teach in that course and apply it on the water today. The first ingredient is getting an early start. As you can see, it is just an absolutely, absolutely beautiful morning, but it is very, very early. Let's go ahead and get a line in the water and I'll talk conditions. We got a strong incoming tide. That wind's gonna blow five, 10 miles an hour out of the southeast. It's gonna be sunny, but it's looking like it might be partly cloudy now, which would be even better. I mean, it would be great if it were just overcast and we might catch them here. And if we don't catch them here, we're gonna go somewhere else. That would be the bottom. Ah, well, I can't just whack him in one spot. Well, that's the bottom, that felt good. Okay, this is just gonna be one of those days, I guess. All right, that's that. I'm done. That, that's enough. <sighs> oh, the tide should be moving a lot better here, and it's not. This is the summertime. As you can see, it's early morning, daylight's burning. The fish aren't going to be biting all day long. We need to move, we need to find fish. We need to go to some other fishing spots it is that I have in mind, and we need to get there and fish them with a purpose and get out. Unless there's a lot of fish there, then we just stay there and whack them. So, see you at the next spot. All right, so I know I want to fish this rig right here, but there's two boats on it. There's going to be boats everywhere today. That's just the way it is. It's a weekend. The weather's pretty good. Every one of their moms going to be out fishing. Yeah, that dude's like parked exactly where I want to be. Dang it, dang it, dang it. All right, I think I know, I know that guy in that boat. That's Captain Chris. And they're, they're hooked up right now, so I'm just gonna try and get where I can. Chris, what's up, man? Oh, what's that? Really? Oh, well, I, I, I got my phone on silent. I got my phone on silent so it doesn't ring whenever I got cameras on. Uh,
Yeah, yeah I, I don't, I don't want to get in your way. Now we're fishing right here. I'm talking about going on the other side, right between these two big poles, and getting that riff raft down there. We can't fish that. We're gonna get snagged up, but you'll be able to jig it. All right. The big ones are sitting in that riff raft. Roger that. Man, th this is nice. Very, very rarely do I get to pull up to a spot and I already have someone here to tell me what's up. <laughs> All right, so that's Captain Chris. He's a Lake Pontchartrain speckle trout original gangster, and he knows what's going on out here. Very, very good angler. Uh, but I want to keep a respectful distance from him because he's got customers, he's working. And, but I do want to fish this spot too, so I'm just going to go fish opposite of him, and uh, we'll give it a whack. You know, if they're if they're there, they're there. Then if they're not, then you know we'll just we'll go somewhere else. All right. Yeah, I really think today's just gonna be that kind of day where you just gotta bounce around to, to get on them. But I fortunately have many a good idea as to where fish are at. I'll tell you something that might work out for me is that there's just a lot of boats out. And I might, might go to the East Biloxi Marsh go fish all that i'm sure that there's diving birds running out uh, there's there's shrimp running and birds diving on dude water's moving here way better water was hardly moving at the lnn there we go oh came off ooh ooh it felt good ain't getting off this time Whew. if this is a trap it's a nice one and it is bam son Sixteen and a half inch speckle trout. Kind of fish you do not need to measure, but I did anyway. Welcome to the club, buddy. Speckle trout number one. There's another fish. All right, guys, let's talk about lure color. Lure color. Is one of those things that matters more to the tackle manufacturer, the guy that's making the lure, than it does to the actual than to the actual fish. Speckle trout number two. So when I'm first fishing a spot, like when I first pull up to a spot, my concern is not what lure color I have. My concern is getting a good presentation on the fish, meaning getting the bait in front of the fish. And I believe in this so much that I have a free course at my website, lafbelite.com, called, little booger, came back and hit it like three times in a row. I have a free course at my website at lafbelite.com called Elements of Effective Fishing. And what it covers is the whole process of pulling up to a spot and fishing it whether there's fish there or not and fishing it in such a way so that if fish are there you will get a bait in front of them and then when you're done fishing it once you go through this process that's outlined in elements of effective fishing you'll know that there's no fish there and you can just leave what you don't do is sit there and continue to change lure colors until you're blue in the face it doesn't matter what color the lure is if there's no fish there to bite it in the first place and it doesn't matter Finding fish in the first place and just getting a bait in front of them. Those are like the two most difficult and most critical things that people struggle with. Anyway, those are all things I could talk about all day long. And if you'd like to learn more about them, you should visit my website, lafbelite.com and sign up for Elements of Effective Fishing. There we go. Man, just a little tap on that, on that bite.
get that bait right back out there. I'll tell you that sometimes, uh, like back in the day when I used to run a bay boat and take people fishing, like do guide, guided trips and whatnot, I tell people like, just get that fish in the boat and if it comes off, cast right back out. Or if they're using live shrimp, rebait and cast back out. But just get back out there, keep that bait in the water, keep those fish interested, keep them there at the side of the boat. <laughs> Bam, oh, I got bit, but I didn't, didn't keep them on. Okay, in you go, speckle trout number three. There we go, that's a nice one. Dude, these trout are just violent. They're just violent, crazy speckled trout. They're nice. Quality fish. Look at that, beautiful speckled trout. Absolutely gorgeous. Speckled trout number four. Awesome. Let's do it again. And again, and again, and again, and again. Ooh, hit it on the... Well, Stinker hit it on the retrieve. I hate it when they do that. Look, he balled me up again. That, that one was just sitting on it. The line just started moving. Let me tell you all something, hook sets, hook sets are free. If there's any doubt in your mind whatsoever, you just jack him in the face. Oh, nice trap. Whew. Oh, I could do this all morning. Come on. Number five. Bam. All right, so let's revisit lure color. We do have all these different lure colors. When is it that we should start using them? Well, it is my opinion that you should start fooling with lure color when you're on fish and you're catching them or they're giving you some kind of feedback telling you maybe what the changes it is you should be making. Fish number six. There we go. Ooh, ultraviolet. Welcome to the club, buddy. Speckle trout number seven. That fish just blasted it, absolutely blasted it. Nothing subtle about this fish at all. Bam, and auto release and get back out there. Let me get this fish in the cooler. Number eight. That, that connected good. And there's just some nice fighting speckle trout. Whew. And right back out there. All right, put this bad boy away. Welcome to the club. You have lots of buddies in there. And that's trout number nine. See if we can at least catch 
one more spackle trout or something before I leave here. There we go, right there, man. See, man, as long as I'm catching fish, I ain't going anywhere. Oh, it's a nice speckled trout. Got off at the side of the boat. All right, this is this is only going to get a few more casts, and and the whole reason I'm kind of cracking the whip here is because it's summertime. And when it gets hot and nasty outside and you don't want to be outside anymore, that's about the same time the fish stop eating. Come on, man. I can feel something down there just pecking at Okay, this is my last cast. Man, I said last cast like five. All right, that's it. I'm out. I'm out. We should just be whacking the absolute dog tar out of them, and we're not. I don't even know what dog tar is. Let's just get out of here. All right, so, so far, we've got nine speckled trout. Not bad, but I feel that bite has fizzled out. Two other fishing guides that I know and respect, uh, obviously they're gone, they feel like it's fizzled out. It's time to go to the Biloxi Marsh. And specifically, not like, you know, like Stump Lagoon, Muscle Bay, I'm talking like the top side by the Mississippi Sound and, and the eastern side, more towards like Chandelier Sound. We're gonna go there, we're going to fish oyster reefs and diving birds. We're gonna put a pattern together, we're gonna polish off this limit. See you at the next spot. And that did not take long. So we got our first flock of the day right over here. We're gonna go see what's underneath it. Hopefully, the, the rest of the limited speckled trout that we need. Yeah, it's summertime. And during the summertime, we can get shrimp flowing with the tide. And when they're just minding their own business, and they will get harrandered by speckled trout and other undesirable fish like gaff tops. So what I like to do is try to get a downwind of them so that way I kind of have the wind in my back. It makes casting long, like making long bomb casts into the birds a lot easier. And you want to cast to where the birds are looking in the water and preferably anywhere you see a shrimp jumping out of the water. Yeah, and it is hot. It's definitely a hot summer day. Okay. My weapon of choice here is going to be a popping cork because I can bomb cast that bad boy. And the lure that I have on underneath this popping cork is uh, this like little, just a fake shrimp, guys. It is made by Tsunami. I just saw it at Walmart. It just looked cool. I just bought it. Oh, check this out. Little crab trap here. And you can see the water just flowing right around it. We got good tidal movement here. Now it comes to choosing like what flock of diving birds it is. There we go. Come on now, come back. Like I was saying, when it comes to choosing like, okay, is that flock of birds worth trying? Well, uh, I like to see seagulls, uh, like these seagulls like with the black heads on them. I like to see laughing seagulls. And here we go, the first dink of the day. And when you're fishing birds, you're, you're gonna, dinks are just gonna be part of the game, but I still think this is worth trying. Look, he's, he's uh, diving on a little jumping shrimp right there. So you don't wanna fish terns. Terns are like those smaller, or those uh, smaller birds. You wanna fish birds like these that are looking in the water and confidently diving. Not nitpicking, like they're not too sure if anything's there, confidently diving birds. I've seen better bird action than this. I'm sure that there's better bird action out here right now, but this is just the first flock I came across and it's just worth trying. Birds don't always have to be diving either. They can just be sitting. Uh, in a lot of places where, right there. In a lot of places, they know, the birds know where shrimp are gonna show up. So they'll just sit there and wait. So it could be a spot that's worth trying anyway. And the speckled trout could be there underneath them. They're just not, they don't have any shrimp to drive to the surface yet. So it's, it, it's worth trying, but by worth trying, I mean like show up, give it a few casts. If you don't catch anything, go. This is a nice trout. You can just tell right away by like just the way they pull, the way they come to the surface and shake their head. Oh, he's getting smaller as he's getting to the boat. Man, that happens a lot. But, uh, he might be 12 inches. And honestly, I mean, I'm keeping fish. It's the 12 inch fish I want to keep. They just fillet so much better. Oh yeah, welcome to the club, buddy. 
That's speckled trout number 10. Excellent. Let's see, this is, might be another guy that's like right at 12 inches. I don't know, I think this guy's just gonna be a throwback. We can try. No, that's a that's a throwback. All right, this is this is just gonna get. Oh, there we go. Oh, feels like a gaff top. Oh, I hate these things so much. They're not bad eating, and I wish more people ate them. But you know, unfortunately, it's just something you got to put up with out here. And having this big flipper goes the distance and taking care of them. Oh, great! And he screwed up my bait. Yeah, this bait might be done. I might have to replace this with a uh, something else like a matrix shad on a jig head because I don't have any more of these. Oh, I'm gonna. I don't. I don't know if I want to buy more if they get tore up this easy. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go and swap out this bait real quick, and then we will continue the search. We'll continue the search for more diving birds, and we will find more. There's a rig up here that looks pretty good, I, mean, I guess. I don't know, let's just go try it out. All right. I have fished this rig before in the past, and uh, I can't say that I've had like a bunch of success. It's always been kind of like an afterthought, but around rigs like this one, uh, usually the bottom tends to be harder because maybe a shell pad was installed or there's like a bunch of rocks and you'll see them if they're there. I mean, it won't be a secret. You'll see them on sonar. Yeah, I like doing this a lot more than there's two spots I fished earlier. I know I caught fish. I know I caught fish there and that's great, but I just much rather run around and explore and uh, find success out here. And, and I say that because there's a lot of real estate out here, you know, to, to get away from the fishing pressures. I was just, don't fish community honey holes if you don't have to. Don't fish easily recognizable spots if you don't have to. Come out here and find your own fish. Ooh. Come on now. Ooh, something just thunked it right there. Come on. This is this is what I'm talking about when I say let the fit listen to the fish. Let them tell you what they want. Right? The sonar and, and the, the tackle and techniques, all that, that's good. But like, okay, so I was like casting towards the rig and not really catch anything there. But I did see some shadows out here on the grass. I was like, well, let me cast out there and then something just sucked at it. Okay, all right, so, so maybe there's something to that. And I just got balled up right there. Hmm. So because they're giving me feedback, something's happening. I know I can investigate further. This doesn't mean change colors. This doesn't mean pull out the tackle box and start tying on different lures. If they're giving you feedback on that one lure, whatever it is, that one color, then just keep fishing it. Ooh, come on! Oh! And you know, and th these could be little 10 inch white trout down there, man. But uh, ideally I'm gonna catch one and I'll know. All right, I'm just, I'm done with this. Let's go back to, uh, let's go back to looking for diving birds. All right, we're gonna try this out. This is an oyster reef, as evidenced by the markers you see here. Uh, this is how you know like where to go and what to try. They're not all good. Some just have smooth bottoms, others have actual oysters everywhere on them, right? And that makes for, for really good fishing, or it can. All right, so you can see here on the screen, you see like where it's 
all uh you see like uh, it looks like the texture is rougher here like there's texture here and then this is like a smooth bottom and that is a smooth bottom these are oysters and oyster cults that right there is the edge and this is that smooth bottom that's usually no good to fish this is the stuff you want to fish so if you use sonar and you should you know, most boats come equipped within a day and, and they're relatively affordable in the big scheme of things if everything is they're going to spend money on in the realm of inshore fishing in the first place. If you use sonar, you can decipher which oyster reefs are going to be better. If you don't have sonar, uh, what, what I did for years is that I would fish oyster reefs that just have a bunch of these poles everywhere. And some of them will even have signs on them saying, hey, no trawling here because they don't want the, the, the shrimpers to come through here and tear up the bottom and destroy the oyster reef that they created. So the more of these sticks, the merrier, the better. I personally like to use sonar to confirm what's there. And when I do, I drop a waypoint so I can always go back to it. I know exactly where it is I need to go to try it again. Some oyster reefs, I have to hit them up over a period of time, over several fishing trips to really decide, hey, they're good or hey, they're bad. All right, so I didn't really catch anything here. I gave it a drift and that's really all I'm gonna give it because daylight's burning. Let's go back to looking for diving birds. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll until I see diving birds. Uh, I'm not too crazy about these birds. I'm just gonna fish them real quick anyway. They are sitting and it's okay to have sitting birds. I would just prefer to see shrimp jumping everywhere out of the water and to see birds just going crazy. Oh, and there's another set. Oh, there's even a bigger set of diving birds over there. Oh my goodness. Excellent, good. So we, we can do this one, then we can roll over there and fish that one. Come on, fish, Let's do it, do it now. Do it right away. There we go. Dude, just come to the top. It's a trout, yes! It's a trout. Yes, it's a speckled trout. It's wonderful to catch speckled trout, but what's not so wonderful is this glitchy camera. See, to film an entire fishing trip for YouTube is something that's both rewarding and nerve wracking. It's rewarding because you get to tell a visual story. One that shares practical fishing advice in an entertaining way to help people create awesome memories on their next fishing trip. It's nerve wracking because there's a multitude of technical difficulties that eventually arise when pushing the performance envelope of camera equipment. It's taken me years to work out all the kinks, but every once in a blue moon something inexplicably happens. And this time it happened the moment I finally got on the good speckled trout bite that I had been looking for all day. The chest cam craps the proverbial bed, and this is a big deal because it's integral to telling a good story. It offers the first person perspective of going fishing, and allows me to show you important details like lures, conditions, and the fish I am catching. Without this important element, the fishing trip loses its soul, endangering the video as a whole and potentially Please, damning no, it to the no, recycle bin. No. Surely you understand why I've considered different ways to reconcile this camera's mortal sin. Maybe I should retire it, blow it to smithereens, or toss the infernal thing into the gaping maw of Mount Doom like Frodo did the One Ring. Then, just when I thought all this was bad enough, I get kicked in the balls. Then I had to watch it again in post. That really hurt too. The camera's fate is yet to be decided, and if you have an idea, please comment below. But for now, know that it screwed up 10 speckled trout in a row, and I'll leave you at the moment I caught on to what was happening. I don't know how much of, uh, of that last chest cam video was corrupted, or if it's corrupted at all, or, or what's going on, but it just, we'll find out in post, man. That's it. All right, audio sync on three cameras. Okay, let's get back after these fish. All right, now the birds have sat back down. Things have calmed down. Maybe it's over? Or maybe I just need to wait a second. So I'm just gonna give it, you know, a couple minutes 
And this entire time, I'm still scanning the horizon looking for another set of birds I can go to. And that big one that I was in love with is still sort of going. Still sort of going. They're diving over there. Remember, if these birds aren't diving, it's not because there's no fish there. It just means that they're not seeing any shrimp that they can eat. There could still be fish there, and if you throw a bait, you'll find out, you know? It was just kind of like that. It feels like a smaller trout. Let's see what we got. Ooh, this guy might keep. You know what? I haven't seen any of these guys cough up shrimp yet. Oh, this guy did. Here's a little shrimpy shrimp that he just coughed up. Give it to me. Give me that shrimp. There we go. See that? Speckle trout number 20. Oh man. So my bait here kind of got tore up a little bit, but what I'm going to do is just thread it back on there. I know the paddle tail's missing. It doesn't matter. Just get it on there, get it back out. As long as securely on the hook and the hook it, and the hook is exposed. I'll just cast right in the middle of those birds and bam, hooked up. Oh. Did it come off? There we go. Nice keeper speckle trout. These fish are frantically looking, just running and just by ah! Nah, I just poked myself. They're just running around and looking for something to eat. As soon as they see something, bam, they hit it. So it doesn't have to be perfect. 21. Come on, trout, let's do it. This, this is pulling a little different. And yeah, freaking gaff top, man. Now, when I'm processing these fish, you'll notice I'm, I'm pretty good about getting them to the side of the boat and getting them off the hook. This flipper helps out so much, but what also helps is having the experience for one. Boom, get them off the, get them off the hook, get back out there. But you'll notice that I don't grab the main line. The main line is braid and braid can cut you. And especially the bigger gaff tops, it can be bad. What I do is I grab that popping cork and use it like a handle. It's awesome. And that way you don't cut yourself, man, especially when you cut yourself really good and salt water gets in it. It's just annoying. It stings. Could be a trout. I don't know. If it would just come to the top and shake his head. It's a, oh, it's a nice trout. Oh, it's a nice trout. I thought it was another gaff top. Oh, boat flip that bad boy. All right, come here, come here, goober. Come here, goober. It's a nice fish. Speckle Trout 22. Right away. Oh, there we go. He came off, but he came back for it, or one of his buddies picked up on it. Nice trout. This is, this really just goes to show why it is you want to spend time learning more about speckle trout number 23, but also scouting, looking for new fishing spots. A lot of people just don't even know what to look for in the first place. And, and I covered some, some of that in this video and I, I hope that you benefit from it and go out and have a good time because that's what this whole thing boils down to. But if you really want to learn more, if you just want to shave years of learning things the hard way, 
off of that learning curve, then you really need to take a hard look at my courses inside LAFB Elite, especially Inshore Fishing 101. Oh, he came off. The premise here is that you can learn where these fish are biting, pick out all those spots, and ultimately just an educated guess, right? But you want a well-educated guess and go fish a bunch of different spots, kind of like I did today, until you just get on them. Kind of like what I'm doing now. And look, again, the birds are kind of chilling out. The action has subsided, but I'm just gonna wait it out and just see what happens. Now the birds are getting fired up again. I just hooked up with a fish again. And this is a spot I never caught speckled trout at this particular oyster reef or oyster lease before. I'm just applying what it is that I teach inside my membership to locate these fish and catch them. Speckled trout 24. Bam. Catching a limited speckled trout is fun, guys. What's not fun is when they tangle the hell out of your cork. This one feels good. Oh yeah, that's that's the size. That's the size I'm looking for. Da, 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 da. Speckle trout 25. <clears throat> feels good. Any time spent on the water is time well spent, but catching speckled trout sure does make it better. Especially with rising fuel costs, it helps to know where to go and what to do. It helps to have a process, and that's what I offer to you. The knowledge of the summer fishing pattern, tools to measure it, and the process to successfully fish it are detailed inside Summer Fish Location. Inside this course, you'll find 10 video lessons and two quizzes that detail everything from fish behavior to primary forage to dominant weather and more. Summer Fish Location, as well as all of my courses inside LAFB Elite, comes with instructor support from yours truly. So if you have a question or require clarification on a specific lesson, I'm there to help. To learn more, please visit lafbelite.com summer or use the video description in the link below. Tight lines, and thanks for watching.